In the last video, we made up a bunch of random points or points along a line that we added noise to. So they have some randomness in there. They weren't completely random. They roughly fell along some line and we're erasing from our minds that we actually know the original line we fit to because we're making up a problem. So we're coming into this just with an array X and an array Y of a bunch of points that somehow roughly fall around a line. And our job is to use linear regression to fit that to a line. So that's where we're picking up. So what I'll do is copy and paste that section header. And here's our next section of code. And we will call this fit to a line. Now we're coming into this fresh, like we don't know anything. And so the first thing I would always want to do is to plot our samples. And when we do this, we don't want to plot them with a connected line. Here's why. Let's go ahead and plot X comma Y. And let's plot it with a solid red line. We'll do an axis equal tight as well, just to look at everything proportioned. Well, look at that line. We even have a loop in it. Well, that looks absolutely crazy. And that's because we should not be connecting random points with a line. We should just draw them as discrete points. So let's look at these with discrete X's. So that'll just plot discrete X's and not connect them with a line. Now that is much more representative of a bunch of random points that just generally fall along some line. And this is what we want to fit our line to. Now, mentally, I might be looking at this and say, oh, that has a slope, maybe 1.5 ish and a Y intercept, maybe uh, one ish. And so that's what I have in my mind. So when we get an answer, if it deviates way far from that, then we know something is wrong. So the first thing I'll do in my code is usually figure out how many samples we have. So determine number of samples. So I can look at the length of either X or Y. If I wanted super robust code, I might look at the length of both and compare the two. And if they're not the same, give some kind of error message. So we'll just look at one of them. I won't be too concerned about writing the world's most robust code. And so if we run this, and now we can look at n, that should be 20. Well, we're going to use linear regression to fit those points to a line. So we have to build the matrix equation. So build matrix equation. We know that we have a column vector F and a rectangular matrix, potentially square matrix, but rectangular matrix Z. And so F is really just our values of Y made into a column vector. So just in case this is a row vector, um, this little notation where I give a parentheses and a colon makes that a column vector. Now my Z matrix, the first column is the values of X followed by a column of all ones. And how many ones? N number of ones. So N by one gives me a column vector of ones. So now if we go ahead and run this, we can look at F, it's the column vector of our Y values and Z is a matrix where we have the first column is our values of X and then the next column is all ones. So our matrix equation right now is really F equals Z times A, where A is a little uh, column vector containing M over top of B. So that's our slope and our Y intercept when we solve this. Now we have many more equations than we have unknown. So we have to solve this in the sense of least squares. And that's the next step, solve in the sense of least squares. So we would like to just say Z backward divide F, but again, we need to solve this in the sense of least squares. And what we do is we pre-multiply both sides of that equation by the transpose of Z. So let's go ahead and, and do that. We can say Z dot transpose times Z. So, that's our Z transpose Z. And then we need to pre-multiply F also by the transpose of Z. So Z dot apostrophe times F. Now the dot apostrophe is doing the ordinary transpose. If I only had an apostrophe, that's doing a transpose plus the complex conjugate of everything in Z. 
Now, right now, Z is all real numbers, so it really wouldn't make a difference, but it's just good practice when we really mean just a regular transpose to use a dot apostrophe. Now we're solving this in the sense of least squares. If we run this, now we can look at A, and that's a column. Whoops, I typed in the wrong letter. A. We're looking at a column vector of two things. The first one is our slope, and the second one is the y-intercept B. Now we might be thinking, well, this first one does match pretty close to the 1.24 that we started with. Remember up here? Uh, why is this why intercept so off? Is this even correct? How do we know if we're correct? Well, a great way to know if we're correct is to go turn off the noise. So what if we just commented this whole section out? Now we should get exactly 1.24 and 0 0.55. And let's look at A. And we got that. So this means our code is working. Now, you might ask the question, if you're answering a problem in a homework and you're only ever given those random samples, you don't have access to that. How would you even know that? Make up your own problem, just like we did here. It's, it's great to test your algorithm on something that has a known answer and make sure you get that answer. Then you can run it on a problem that I give you and you have an extra degree of insurance that you're correct. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it's definitely a better guarantee or a better chance than if you didn't do that at all. So we can go ahead and uncomment that. And we'll get the, the same answer back that isn't exact, and that's fine. That's due to the randomness. The, and, the randomness has erased some information from the problem. So this is the correct answer with the randomness in there. And what I might want to do then is extract M and B from A. Extract M and B. So I might say M, that's the first number in A, and B is the second number. Now, how do I know this is the first and second number? Because that's how it was formulated in the notes. I could easily formulate it with the other way around. That would actually swap the columns in Z. Uh, but this is how I formulate it with M being the first number and B being the second number. So that's really it. We've solved the problem. The last thing to do is to dress this up with some fancy graphics, and that will happen in the next video. See you there.